You get those doors in the back? So hopefully you guys got lunch. If you didn't, you, you're, hopefully you're a food camel because lunch is gonna be over by the time we get out of here, so. All right, so, hang on one second. We're here to talk about watershed today. I've got a couple of bios. Um, we're gonna kick this off with Yong Lai, PhD. I'm gonna read his bio off of this. Yong Lai is a specialist hydraulic engineer at the Technical Service Center, U.S. Bureau of Reclamation, Denver, Colorado. Dr. Lai obtained his PhD in 1990 and has since been involved in a wide range of research development and engineering projects. His professional career includes working for a consulting firm, a research institute, the University of Iowa, and the federal government. Dr. Lai has published more than 60 scientific journal papers in diverse engineering disciplines. He is the lead developer of SRH2D, as well as the 3D CFD model U2 RANS. Dr. Lai currently serves as an associate editor of the ASCE Journal of Hydraulic Engineering and as a member of the Scientific Advisory Board for several conferences. Let's welcome Dr. Lai. Well, thank you, Jeff. Uh, well, no surprise, I will talk about SH2D. Uh, and, uh, I do acknowledge my colleague, Ben, and uh, it's lucky to get him join our group. He is a student of Thanos and also an Iowa graduate. Okay. And uh, he's excellent, working with me on the watershed modeling development. But of course, uh, here's the surprise. And SH2D is advancing to hydrological watershed modeling. But it's actually it's a full circle back. When I joined, when I joined the reclamation, I was tasked to develop a watershed model. Okay. Then, so actually the first model released for public use is called SRHW. W stands for watershed. Okay. But after I worked on it, uh, our commissioner at that time decided, well, reclamation is really not in watershed business. We are stepping on other people's toe. We only focus on reservoir and the river. I said, okay, then I will change it. So it becomes a, a such a 2D river model. But now reclamation is going back. We need to look at a bigger scale. So full, full circle back after 15 years, we are back to what's yet. Okay, so that's the story I'm going to. So that's basically the message for today. I just, I just, just want to let uh, um, the community know if you ever use SH2D for river simulation, and it's going to be also the same procedure, the same code, you can do watershed modeling. So SH2D can be counted as H and H model from now on. So obviously, what does it mean? What it means is the same model, same procedure, and we are working with Aquavel, you know, Alan Zanto is here, to put everything also within SMS. So the same procedure, and you can do river simulation by itself, as you used to do, or you can do watershed modeling separately, or combine them, okay, do both within the same domain, same simulation. So basically, at least I know I'm not good at drawing anything, but hopefully still it means something. And currently what we do is, you know, hey, we just focus on zooming a very small area, or just a river ridge. Yeah. And now with SH2D, with this extension, we can do bigger scale. Okay. We can do the entire watershed including uh, the river sections as a part of it, okay? So of course the question is, why are you doing this? Okay. And if you convinced, okay, that's a good reason, then you may ask, okay, what really is in this watershed modeling, right? You want to know more. Then if you convinced, uh, further convinced you want to use it, 
Then there's the how question, how to do it. And hopefully you will ask also, can I trust it? Okay, what's the result? So that's what I'm going to quickly go through this. And uh, because of time limit, I cannot get into details. So just a message here, okay? So why we are doing watershed modeling, and at least at reclamation, as I stated earlier, we are, now we, a lot of projects, we need to look at big scale issues. Because we do find out, we fix this location, then downstream is bad, or upstream is bad, okay? So only do things at one location is not enough, okay? So it's a system approach, and sometimes, you know, project requires it, no matter you like it or not. We need to do a basin scale simulation. And also reclamation, we also start to move on, you know, we need to answer the questions related to climate change. And uh, recent years, fire issues, we have to look into it. And also, for some project, you know, when we do a river simulation, right, right now we always say, hey, upstream, you need the hydrograph. But how do you get it, right? If you have a gauge, then you can use the gauge information. What if you don't have, right? So, and also, particularly for uh, reclamation, we have so many reservoirs. We want to know if upstream something changed, either climate change, fire change, whatever change, you know, we want to know the sediment delivery into our reservoir. And a lot of locations, we may have the flow gauges, but sediment gauge is rare. So a lot of reservoirs at the reclamation, we even don't know how much sediment comes, in, comes into our reservoir. Okay, so there's a lot, of, a lot of reason we need to do something. And uh, then I was zooming, why SRH2D? There are so many watershed models out there, okay? And uh, I man, spent so much time trying to understand different models. It is a very, very complex, diverse area. Every model claims they can do everything, okay? Although it's not true, including SH2D, so I will focus on it. But at least the reason we do it within SH2D is first, it will be a one model approach, okay? In the past, it compares to two model approach. You do one model, what is it? Then cut off at a certain place, take the results out of that what is it model, then put it into your river model. That's called 2D model approach. Yeah, it works, okay? It works. But with this one model approach, at least you don't need to go through the process of where to cut it, how to exchange the data, things like that, okay? So I call it one procedure approach. You just set up it, it once, that's it. So it's more user friendly. And when you don't need a coupling, results are usually more accurate, okay? So of course, that's not enough reason for us to do it within such a 2D. So we do invest it in a lot of effort to improve upon the existing approach, okay? The approach, the improvement consists of just two words here. One is process-based, the other is mesh distributed. I will, will explain what does it mean. Then again, in the watershed modeling field, all kinds of terminologies are out there, and uh, sometimes, I don't know you, I don't understand exactly what does that mean. When people talk about distributed, sorry, it's not distributed, I tell them. <laughs> so things like that, wow, okay? So, I will come to that point uh, later, okay? But I do want to point out the intended use first. The SH2D watershed model have two purposes here. The first is mostly used before is event-based. Because a lot of time we only care about if a big rainfall comes, 
right? Then sediment starts to be moved. We care about that. So event simulation. Actually, event-based simulation is easier. Less processes are involved, and the results tend to be actually better. Okay. And the last few years, the in primary improvement is into the continuous simulation. For continuous simulation, you have to look at, you know, when study question related to base flow and particularly snow melt, okay? And then groundwater issue has to be <laughs> involved. So a lot of more physical processes have to be incorporated. So right now, it's such 2D, we can do both, event-based or continuous simulation. But I do want to point out the limitations first. SRH2D watershed model is not intended for agricultural watershed. What I mean is you don't use this model to try to figure out how should I do the farming here, okay? Like tillage, you know, crop rotation, a lot of farming related things, we don't do it, okay? There are good models out there which you can use, okay? And also, SH2D watershed model, we do not intend it for urban watershed. Primarily because for urban watershed, I think the difficult part is the sewer system, you know, th th those things which we don't do, okay? So we are not intended for these two kinds of applications, okay? So come to back to, so SH2D, we call it process-based. And uh, the definition of it is so difficult, I do, even don't want to try it, okay? But I, I'm still trying it anyway. <laughs> I define the process-based is divide your entire system into different processes so that each process can be mathematically and physically described. It's not just say, oh, here's a process, then we use this empirical equation to compute it. No, nope, that's not a process based. Okay. Process based, you have to use first principle conservation law to control your process. Okay. So almost most processes, we do that. So we have to solve partial differential equation for it. So that's why it's a little bit harder. Okay. Uh, why we are doing this? It's because at least in theory, this kind of approach in theory is more accurate. Okay? It's redu we can reduce the empiricism to the minimum. Although some processes we still going to result to empirical relation. But when that happens, it should be explicitly stated so and point out what is the primary empirical equation coefficient over there, how to select it, okay? And uh, actually the primary improvement is in the mesh distributed term, okay? And, uh, if you use SH2D, you know SH2D, we, we are the most flexible approach in terms of mesh. Why it's called the most flexible? Because you can use any shape. When I say any shape, I mean any shape, okay? If you can develop a, any shape mesh, we will take it, okay? And why it's important? Because for what shape? For watershed, we, you, you don't want to spend a lot of time developing a mesh. But on the other hand, there are so many features all out there you don't want to miss. Okay? So that's the automatic mesh generation comes into play. Okay? So Ellen and I, we have you know, discussed this over wow, multiple years, and I can Gladly say, Alan has already developed this capability. And he promised me next release, right? Will be out, okay. And uh, 
I, I will show you one, uh, one, two examples. I just sent him a watershed terrain. He did it just like that. Okay, give the mesh back to me. Okay, then I can, I can use it. Okay. And also, mesh distributed approach, the input, your primary watershed input data sets is independent from, from your mesh setup. That's a huge advantage here. What this means is, uh, for watershed modeling, primary input is besides terrain. You give the rain information, rainfall information, you give the land cover information, and also soil type information. Those are readily available and downloadable from most, a lot of places. And you can download those data which usually is already in GIS format. That, those are the input to SH2D. You never change those things. The only thing you change is the, you can, you, you can change is the mesh. Okay? But you can use different mesh, whatever you want, but the input is the same. So, so from user's viewpoint, it will be much easier to apply a watershed model like that. Okay? Some watershed model is so hard to use because you have to keep dividing your, dividing your watershed into the sub-catchment shape, <laughs> one by one. So anyway, I will move on. Yeah, here's just one, I steal the one picture from Alan last year, you know, automatic mesh generation, simply talk about you have terrain, then automatically, based on the feature, it can create, uh, what's the term? The, Alan, what's your term to use? Oh, break lines, sorry. <laughs> and based on break line, then you can automatically generate mesh like that, okay? And actually last week or two weeks ago, I forgot. I sent him this Iowa Clear Creek watershed terrain. Oh, the terrain is behind it. And he quickly just generated a mesh like this. Automatically, by the way. It actually already delineated all the channel networks with a mesh like this. Okay, he, he, uh, Alan called it quad mesh. Yeah, but as I said, it's actually totally take any mesh. If you can generate, I will use it, okay? That's the mesh. So just one example, okay? So the pro, SH2D, we use a very advanced numerical method. So I will quickly go through. Actually, for what to share the modeling, you know, one key issue which is difficult to de decide is overland versus channel network. So we give, we have two options. One is a traditional way, okay? Channel network, you can still do the, yeah. You can still do the 1D channel network, okay? Overland is 2D, but it's all down behind the scene, you don't know, okay? And uh, SSD can automatically do 1D, 2D coupling behind, you know, you don't have to do anything, okay? Or, even better, I prefer to do everything in 2D. But sometimes it's not possible, sorry if those, uh, yeah. If you are large, if watershed is very large, okay, or if you know your channel systems have specific features you want to represent, sometimes you have no choice, you still need to use a 1D channel network, okay, particularly for large watershed. So both options are there. And also improve the stability. Some of you I know, for SH2D, some people keep asking me, what's the time step? What's the time step of DT I should use? We, we, we cannot answer that, okay? But with watershed model, I can proudly answer to you now. Well, you don't need to specify. It's dynamically determined for you, and the stability is guaranteed. That guarantee is not based on the so-called CFL number, okay? The CFL number is theoretically true only for linear one equation system without diffusion. I can keep going on, going on, limitations, people don't know that, okay? CFL is not the best way, but we published this recently, okay? We published this, you know, variable time step approach, and I'm scratching my head, you know, hey, maybe the same idea can be used for river simulation. I still not able to achieve it yet, but still in my brain, okay? 
Uh, okay, probably because of time, I will go quick. What processes are included for watershed? Our primary interest is surface runoff. Okay, I want to know the river flow. I want to know the water from overland into my river. Oh, that's what I'm interested in. But what's the input? In order to get that right, you need what input? The input include, okay, I will go on to next, okay. Our primary interest is the overland, channel network, and also the sediment transport, soil, soil erosion, these are my interests, okay. But in order to get it right, there's a water input. I need a rainfall. I, I need to know the snow melt information. Okay. I need to know groundwater, if it's saturated, what can come back into your river system. So all these processes are in SH2D. Separate, these modules are there. Okay. These are what input. But in order to do the service runoff right, those inputs are not sufficient because not all of it are used for runoff. So there's, you have to compute the effective rate, which include rainfall can be intercepted by the vegetation on the watershed, right? It can be evaporized, okay? So all these processes, so, sorry. Precipitations, are you? No. Rainfall inter uh, interception is a separate module. It's, it's based on the land cover information. You know, you can download from a you know, website. And also we have ET uh, evaporation from vegetation module. Okay, then of course, again, you need the land cover for that. And also water loss. What can be you know, evaporated from ground surface, from water surface, even from your subsurface. Okay, all this loss, and also can be infiltrated into the soil. And so we do include subsurface processes, which we consider two modules. One is the vertical unsaturated process, and the second is saturated groundwater processes. All these are included a uh, so-called two-zone approach in the SH2D. By the way, these are very complex, but they are needed only for, only for continuous simulation. Okay? For, for event-based heavy rain, you don't need this. So you have a choice to turn on it or not. Okay. Input data, that's the only thing as a user, right? That's the only thing I care. Okay? Here's the, the input you need to run what shadow model. Terrain and mesh, we already know. For river simulation, we do that. Okay. But now what's new here is you need to provide the precipitation, either from historical data, from radar data, or from climate projection data. Okay. A lot of these data are nowadays available publicly <coughs> online. Okay. Then you, have, you need to give land use, like, oh, this area is farmland, here is a forest, here is a really parking lot, it's up to you, right? But again, this information are also mostly available, okay? Then finally, soil type. It's used primarily for two processes. One is, of course, if we do soil erosion, I need to know what's the soil on your ground, right? And of course, for infiltration, it depends on what kind of soil is there. So these are the basically four types of input to run a watershed model. So last, uh, lastly, I just quickly go through one demonstration cases. So far, this model has been used for multiple, a lot of analytical lab, you know, we, we did an extensive test to make sure every processes it, are correctly implemented, they solve it right, so we have an analytical solution. I'm, I'm not going to go there. But we do, ultimately, we only care real life problems, okay? So we applied it to multiple watersheds with good results. Here is just one quick one. And also because it's published in this journal, journal just last month. It's a clear creek. 
watershed. I know there's a lot of creek, clear, clear creeks. Even in this conference, people talk about clear creek. I thought, oh, it's Iowa. No, <laughs> it's not. Earlier, it's Mississippi, right? And uh, well, Iowa, it's clear creek, okay? Because it's clear creek, but we still have sediment. Okay? It's farmland, Iowa. Okay? So this watershed, you know, uh, we call it its median size. 270 square meter. Because it's the median size, median or small size, we can use a very coarse mesh, believe it or not. Okay? We don't need a complicated 1D, 2D coupling, although we have it, I tested it, they give similar results. Okay? But it's, it's harder, right? Everywhere is 2D is much easier, let's do it. Okay? So I just get the terrain, the mesh is as coarse, it's so coarse. 5,000 elements, okay? And of course, traditional, you know, we just, I just, here I just use quad tri uh, mesh, and the next step, I'm, I, I'm going to use the fancy mesh uh, uh, Allen generator for me, and uh, he promised it's going to be available in a year. <laughs> By the way, uh, yeah, now, I think this watershed model within a year will be available to, for you guys to use. Everything has to be in SMS for you to use. Uh, we are already using it because I use partial interface myself, yeah. Uh, so terrain, we generate the mesh, let me see what else. Then rainfall, for this case, you know, uh, they have a radar data, if I remember, we, can ju we just download it from somewhere. And the band did it for me. Download this, uh, basically this rainfall is divided into this, you know, uh, how to say it, uh, square, this, you know, then each cell, we have a time series of rainfall information from that, that website. It can be input to the SH2D. Actually, just one example. For example, this cell number six, you know, in time, we exactly know the rainfall intensity, okay? So Iowa did rain a lot, okay? It's not Colorado, so. And uh, so this information, we have rain, and then we land use map, we also downloaded from somewhere, you know, I, I have all the link here, it's publicly available. Okay. And basically this has, you know, 58% agricultural land. Oh, I did say, such 2 d is not intended for agricultural land. Well, I'm doing this. Yeah. <laughs> and 50%, you know, then we have a forest, grass, you know, urban, whatever, you know, but it's land use. Okay. And of course, there are certain parameters associated with it. I'm not getting into it, but once we release this code, we will have a detailed manual for it, okay? And mostly these are standard parameters. People already have tabulated recommended value, okay? And uh, then, of course, soil type, input uh, classification, also downloaded from somewhere, okay? And, uh, <laughs> and have description, and then with this land, soil type, the primary parameters, of course, as I said, infiltration, the unsaturated zone, we need the conducti vertical conductivity, and then, of course, once getting into the saturated groundwater, we also need uh, the horizontal conductivity, okay? All this information, again, have, have documented values for it. You can use, and, uh, then soil eludability also from that same database. So once this information here, I can do not only water runoff, I can also simulate sediment. For reclamation, sediment is the thing we are interested in the most, okay? So I just quickly, I just give you two figures. Here is, uh, we simulated uh, three months, three months I remember, uh, in 19, ah, 1999 or 19, sorry, 2008. 2008, okay? And uh, the top one is the rainfall event, okay? Rainfall event. The bottom one is we have two gauges. One is uh, a little bit upstream of this watershed, ex Oxford. The, the other one is uh, at the watershed exit, uh, uh, Coralville. And uh, so these are the two locations. Uh, two colors are, you know, one color is model, one color is measured, basically. Okay. And also we quantitatively calculated the difference with a, a Nash-Sutcliffe coefficient, and for Oxford, you know, 
is 0.52, and at the outlet is 84. In case you don't know what this coefficient it is, this coefficient is really ranged from negative infinity to one. Okay, one is perfect. Negative values, ah, okay, and but this is a good value. Okay. And sediment, we compare, we use we use SH two D results, treat it as measured data, and then developer rating uh, uh, rating curve matched the actual measured data. Okay, so I will stop here. Basically, the message is SH two D is keeping advancing. It's not dead yet, and uh, we are going to do watershed modeling. And just one more advertisement. Actually, SH2D is also advancing to coastal. It already has a coastal module on, uh, working, but I don't know if it depends on when it can be in SMS. So our purpose is ultimately SIH is one model from mountain all the way to ocean. Yeah. Thank you. We got time for one question. Anybody have a question? That's why. How long does it take to run that? Yeah. It, it's, uh, yes. In terms of runtime, I cannot answer immediately, but for the specific case, well, I can answer. <laughs> for example, for this case, uh, in order to run these three months, you know, this is a continuous simulation, not event-based. Uh, on this la laptop, two hours. Two hours. Okay. And the time step is determined internally, so I don't know what is it. So, yeah. okay. an Apple laptop. Oh, it's yours. Okay. <laughs> nah, I don't eat the Apple. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone, thanks, Dr. Lai. Thank you.